Hey brothers and sisters, it's Brother Will and uh, the Holy Spirit, wow, he has been pouring out um, kind of like never before, honestly, in, in my life with dreams and words. Um, it's been a long time since I had a dream. Actually, it's been since like the fall, but uh, June 12th, a couple of nights ago, it's been a couple days since I could actually get uh, the time to make this video, but um, a couple nights ago, it gave me a, a dream, which I believe is for the body of Christ, not just for me, it's just encouragement for all of us that he is indeed uh, almost here to get us bride. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you about the dream and then I'm also going to show you how it ties into this whole Shavuot um, rapture uh, encouragement. And I got a word also about that, uh, the previous video that I did. So um, let me just go ahead and jump right in. So the dream that I had on June 12th, uh, very quick, very short but um, so encouraging. So I'm in this campsite, at, campground rather, and I'm looking for my campsite, okay? My campsite is number 3349, 3349. And um, I'm looking for it, and when I find it, it's right by a shower, but the shower is in the air above the campsite, and it's got blue, four blue walls that are see-through, so four, kind of like a, I want to say like a glass or a plastic kind of material. It's never been used before. It's pristine, but it's in the it's like hovering in the air, and it's got four blue sides on it. Okay, and that's the shower, and the campsite is thirty three forty nine. And I get there, and that's kind of the end of the dream. Okay, it's like super fast. But of course, when I woke up, um, the first thing I did was go to Strong's for thirty three forty nine. You won't believe this. It's or, or actually, hopefully you will. It's just how amazing the Holy Spirit is. So, Strong's 3349 is the word meteorizo, which literally means suspended in midair. Um, it's the root of the English word meteor. So, suspended in midair, where are we going to meet our Lord Jesus? In the air. It gets better, though. That was what the Strong's word meant, and it actually means to raise on high, is another, is another meaning for it, to raise on high. But I kept praying about it, and the Holy Spirit said, go to the verse of Scripture that is chapter 33, verse 49. And I was searching, searching, searching. There was only one verse, and it's in the book of Numbers. Okay, check this out. Numbers 33, 49. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth, unto Abel Shitham in the plains of Moab. And what the, a lot of big words there, but the point is, not only was my dream about camping, but the verse itself was about camping, but it's not just about camping. It is literally the last camp place before God then goes into telling them their instructions about the promised land. Verse 50 is, and then the Lord spoke unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. So the point is, if you go to Numbers chapter 33, you'll see all of these campsites, okay? It gives the very specific geographic locations. 3349 is the last one mentioned. So what do I believe the interpretation of this dream is? Very straightforward, very simple. We're meeting the Lord in the air. We're at the last campsite. The shower was pristine, never been used before. We're about to get our glorified bodies, wash off all of this nasty flesh that is, that is decaying and going away. And we're gonna be reborn into our new glorified bodies. Um, but let me go further with this because uh, there, there's a lot to unpack here. So Moses lived 120 years. We know that, uh, for those of you who've been studying eschatology, you know that 120 jubilees are basically what is believed to be the length of mankind before Jesus will return. That equals 6,000 years, which of course the sixth day God rests, the seventh day is the millennial kingdom. Moses' life, though, okay, if we break it into equal thirds, okay, the first 40 years is equivalent to the first 40 jubilees of God's people from Adam to Abraham, okay? 
Abraham got the word of his true identity, that God gave him a new name, called him out of his land, called God, made his covenant with him and made him his own people, right? Moses, when he was 40, okay, the first third of his life, he was called out of Egypt. He discovered his true identity, all right? Moses' second 40-year time period, okay, is when he's in the desert in Sinai. He's um, waiting on the Lord to call him by the burning bush to then tell him to go and deliver his people. So you've got a 40-year period of, of just kind of wandering in the wilderness with the Lord, okay? Um, that equates exactly with Abraham got the promise, he got his identity, and we wait 40 jubilees, 2,000 years, until Jesus comes, which is the promise, okay? That's the same thing at the end of Moses' second 40-year period was when he was used to deliver the people out of bondage, out of Egypt, okay? Moses' last 40 years, what are they doing? They're wandering in the wilderness waiting to go into the promised land. Literally all these campsites and numbers, that's what they're doing, okay? That equates to the 2,000 years we've been wandering, waiting on our kingdom that we are inheriting, that the Lord Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us this entire time. So while we've been waiting to walk into that promised land, the whole point of the dream and the whole point of 3349, Numbers 3349, and if you take Moses' life with all of this, we are coming to the end of the wandering, brothers and sisters. It is time to go into the promised land. I mean, so many things add up to this. It is just so encouraging. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pray that this just brings encouragement to you, brothers and sisters, as we wait, as we watch. Um, oh, and there is one other verse that I wanted to point out too. This is in a total. I'm doing a totally different study on um, Babylon the Great that I'm going to be doing a video on. I've done previous videos on this. Uh, you can look through my videos. And actually, if you, um, yeah, let me let me just get to this real quick. So, I was studying that because um, there's nothing new under the sun. We know that what has been done will be done, as Ecclesiastes mentions. So, I actually think there's a lot in Habakkuk to unpack about uh, Babylon the Great that hasn't been really talked about a lot. The Holy Spirit's just been leading me through it, but um, chapter 3, verse 4, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. So if you watched my last video about Shavuot and how it confirmed my dream, confirmed Dr. Barry Oz's timeline of, of June 25th Shavuot, um, in, that, in that last video I did, I talked about that I had a dream in August, okay? that was uh, talking about the timing of the rapture, and it said a word was spoken to me that was horns come in pairs, so 19, 10 plus 4 plus 5, okay? I didn't know what the interpretation of that dream is for months, okay? I prayed on it off and on, and then um, if you watched my last video, you saw that it took us to Exodus 19, verse 10, then verse 14, then verse 19, which was talking about the trumpet of the Lord, okay, the horn, his horn. And that they, and so my dream said it comes in pairs. So basically, it was another kind of um, confirmation that the trumpet that's going to call us is not a trumpet of men or a trumpet of angels. It's the trumpet of the Lord, okay? Um, and what's amazing is I just stumbled upon this verse that I, I mean, I'd read Habakkuk who knows how many times in the past, but with this new... Uh, knowledge of the horns of the Lord and his trumpet. Again, I'm just going to repeat this Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. He used a, a horn, a trumpet, if you will, on Sinai when he gave the Ten Commandments, when he came down on high in the, in the clouds and the fire. And he's going to use a trumpet to call us up to meet him again. And we're just waiting on that that day to come, uh, which I believe is imminent. So be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Uh, Lord Jesus, Maranatha, come quickly. If you don't know the Lord Jesus and you're watching this video, or maybe you're watching this video uh, after the rapture and many of us have disappeared, um, the most important thing you could do 
is believe in your heart that Jesus is who he said he is. Admit you are a sinner. Admit you're separated from God because of your sin. But believe that Jesus paid that sin debt once and for all on the cross. Believe it in your heart that he is who he said he is. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Believe it and then call upon his name. Call upon the name of Jesus. Say, save me, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me. Come and, come and reside in my heart. I open my, the door of my heart to you. I receive you. I receive your sacrifice and your gift, your free gift of eternal life. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. I love you. May uh, the Lord bless you and keep you in his perfect peace.